Welcome What's to up, the guys? show. What's up, guys? What's up, guys? I feel like I'm going to be. What's up? What's up? What's up? You're in a Cavino and Rich sandwich. Lucky you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, said no girl ever. So, <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, we know you're a great fighter, a yes. judo expert. Yes. For the people that don't know. Yes. How do you describe your fighting styles? Um, I would say I'm like a female could be, but better. Really? But better? Well, be that's some confidence. I like that. Yeah, well, what makes you say that? Listen, Khabib's great. He's an amazing wrestler. You know, he used to do judo back in the day, but I feel like um, the world's never seen an athlete like me, and uh, my submission skills, I think, are just a tiny bit better than his. Wow. Doesn't he train, but by, I like wrestling him. Like I'm Doesn't he right. train by wrestling bears? Can you wrestle a bear? For sure. <laughs> Easy. By the way, when you watch highlights of yourself like this, yeah. do you, does it take you a minute to be like, oh my god, that's me whooping ass, or do you feel like that's you? No. I feel like when I watch videos of me dressed up like this, I'm like, who is that girl? And when I see that girl, I'm like, right. oh, there's Kayla. That's you and your natural habitat. hundred percent. What's the most underrated and overrated skill in mixed martial arts? Ooh, um, underrated skill, I would say, is, hmm, dang. Did like, I stump you with Yeah, that? no, you didn't stump me. I would say an underrated skill is transition. So. A lot of times you see fighters, they like clip someone and then they see them stumble and then they rush in to go finish them. Learning how to transition from standing to takedowns is a very difficult thing. And I would say the most overrated skill of an MMA fighter is trash talking. Trash it's talking. It's so overplayed. I'm so sick of it. But isn't it part of the Just sport? Just shut up and fight. Really? You don't think that's a major part of getting people excited I feel like it's a major it? part of some organizations, not my organization. Not your organization. Mm. Got it. Okay, well, we're going to talk about that yeah. too. Yeah. By the way, you're a two-time gold medal winner correct i mean first of all congratulations Thank yeah you. it's the olympic olympics uh, just olympics. so everyone knows yeah olympic not, not like a little competition we held which right. is right. incredible right. Yeah. yeah so basically you, you've seen the top of the mountain then twice right and yeah. i know like after that you're like well what's next so i'm gonna ask you what is next i'm gonna climb the mma mountain the mma mountain yeah which whatever means that means whatever whatever i'm just gonna try way. and go down as one of the pound for pound greatest I'm coming for that number one spot. Now, hold on. Let's put this all. I don't all... aim for mediocrity. I want to take it all. Right. I mean, but let's put it all in perspective. Ronda Rousey, a, a bronze mm -hmm. medal winner. You yes. won two gold. Correct. So does that mean you're better than Ronda Rousey? In judo? All right, is that even a question? Well, all around. I mean, okay. So Ronda won a bronze medal and a silver medal at the World Championships, yeah. and she won one World Cup. I've won two Olympic gold medals, the World Championships, the Junior World Championships, every World Cup, Grand Prix, Grand Slam, World Masters, an event there is to win, most of them twice. So people in the judo world don't even compare us. Now in the MMA world, Ronda has accomplished a lot. Right. She broke barriers, she shattered ceilings, she changed the game. She literally made it possible for me to have a job. So I'm grateful to her, I'm thankful for her. But in the judo world, it's not even the same. Not even close. But I'm coming for her in the MMA world. Nice. Like, she's always been my rabbit. You know, she's always been that, that person I chase. I moved to Boston when I was 16 to train with her. I was her roommate and her teammate for years. Um, it's always been a challenge. How, how did her skills size up to you then? Was it easy for you oh, then? Oh, no, no, no. She beat me up. Really? You know, she beat me up. I mean, she's a couple years older than me. She was definitely more experienced than me, but... You know, Rhonda retired from judo like 2009, I think, so I was 19. I mean, right. I hadn't even, I didn't win the world championships until I was 20 years old. So well, you don't from think you 20 can get to her. 26, I like. I, you think you can I get changed. her out of retirement? Is that what you're saying? Or are you just saying you're you're looking to take over in that way? Rhonda out of retirement for MMA? Yeah. No, I wouldn't want to fight Rhonda. You wouldn't want to fight her? No. All right, do you think your transition in mixed martial arts will be better than hers? I hope so, but I mean, she did a great job. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not dis dissing on Rhonda. I think that she accomplished amazing things and I feel like she is a role model for women and young girls around the world. I feel like she has an amazing reach and um, she can do whatever she wants now. When you look at uh, PFL and UFC, is there any woman out there that you feel, oh, I'm, I'm a little nervous about that person or do you have the confidence right now that you are, you could sort of take anyone? I mean, I'm young in the sport. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna pretend like I'm this no, I am a stone cold killer. I, I mean, <laughs> I, I don't know. I was gonna say something there, but then I'm like, wait right. a second, that's not true. I mean, obviously, matchups and styles are very different, but yeah. I fear no one. I'll step in the cage anytime, any place, anywhere. I have a goal, like I said for myself. I want to go down as one of the best. So, in order to be be the best, you have to beat the best. Are, are you so focused in a zone that if you take someone down, it's over? Is it automatically over in your mind at that point? I mean. I try to just remain calm, cool, and collected at all times in the fight, but I do feel like if I get my hands on you, you're in trouble. 
<laughs> uh, PFL, UFC. Give us the differences for people that are uh, unaware. Well, the PFL is a sport. Okay, yeah. it's not an inter entertainment. We have a regular season, a postseason, and a playoffs. There, you, every fighter has two or three fights in the regular season. Then uh, fights in the, if they win those, they fight in the playoffs. And if they win that, then they go to fight in the championship. And the winner takes home a million dollars. So it's not based off looks. It's not based off trash talk. It's not based off anything other than your performance inside the cage. And for me, coming from an Olympic background and that kind of style, I mean, I love it. You know, that's one of the reasons I was so hesitant about MMA. I was like, listen, I'm not here for a beauty pageant or like the friggin' who can talk the best. You're here to kick butt. Yeah, I'm here to like, yeah. And, and the money, I, I read somewhere, the money doesn't motivate you, right? But how far yeah. away are you from, from winning the million? Um, not far. Not far at all? Nope. So you don't think that'll change you at all? It won't make you less hungry? No, no, I don't care. I mean, obviously, money is important. It's, you know, necessity to live, but I'm not going to, like, go balling if I win a million dollars. I'm probably going to go home and take a hot bath and <laughs> get up and go train the next morning. Look at you. By the way, I read that you are a big Eminem fan. You train to Eminem. Yes. You have a, you have a, a special playlist? What's your Eminem songs yes. on, this, on this list? Oh, my God. It's a lot of the old school stuff. Old so, school like, um, I always start my warm up with my, my run, and it's five minutes, and it's sing for the moment. And then every time I, right before I walk out, this is during my Olympic career too, like from the time I was 18 years old till now, I've listened to the same playlist over and over and over again. Um, so when I get ready right to walk out, I listen to Lose Yourself. Wow. And then a lot of stuff in between. I just had a, a Rocky sort of moment, you know, when he's training in a montage and he always has his opponent on the mirror, mm -hmm, you mm -hmm. know, and I know you're a big Rocky fan too. Rocky, did I read Rocky 3 was one of your favorites? Rocky 3. Rocky I had the tiger. 3. Clubber Lang? Yeah. Uh, you know, do you have that <laughs> Mitch visual? dies. Hey, right. woman. What, hey, woman. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, it's definitely one of the best. But is For there sure. someone that you do have your, your eyes set on, like in mixed martial arts? I mean, I'm a big believer in visualization and positive thinking. So every night before I go to bed, I visualize you know, what I want to accomplish in the sport. And that means right now I visualize my next opponent, which is Gina Fabian, on October 11th in Las Vegas. So is her picture on the mirror if we're describing no, Rocky here? I mean, I don't, I, don't take, I don't put a picture up, but I, I write down my goals. So I write down, you know, October 11th, PFL playoffs, win by TKO, submission or knockout. Um, and then I just go through it in my head. I go through what it's going to be like, what it's going to feel like to have my hand raised, what it's going to be like to step in that cage, and the ref go, are you ready? Are you ready? Right. So you vision, Let's you vision get it on. All this. Now, do you, have to, do you feel like there's a difference in, in hating your opponent versus respecting them? Is there, do, you, do you fight better if you actually have something you dislike about them? No. I mean, I, like I said, judo is like one of the most cultured and respected. Like You bow before every mm -hmm. single match. You, know, you, you bow at the end of every match. You're not allowed to talk on the mat. If you do, you get disqualified. So I come from a very cultured sport. And for me, like, I'm a professional. It's nothing personal. It's just business. I'm in there to beat you. But it has nothing to do with who you are as a person or what your favorite color is or what politics you follow. Like, I just want to win. You can really take me down easier than him. <laughs> 100%. Real, real, that it's much easier. I mean, yeah. not easier. I can take you both down with ease. Yeah, I mean, I'm yeah, sure of it. Probably at the same time, <laughs> you know? Oh. But uh, how, do you, how do you feel about social media? Do you, do you like being on social media? Is that part of the gig? Yeah, I mean, obviously you have to... I'm a brand ambassador. I have my own brand that I'm trying to promote. I have things that I want to accomplish outside of the cage. Right. Um, so it's a necessary evil. All right, cool, because you got some tweet splaining to do. Yeah, well, okay. Oh explain oh explain yourself. First of all, this picture of you and Shaq. Right. Does oh. it, I mean, how do you hang with Shaq? My boy. You, I mean, he's getting a little older. Yeah. His knees are weak. Yeah. No, he's got bad you knees and bad him? hips. You could take this guy down or what? Yeah, I taught him. I taught him a couple moves for his show. It was fun. Shaquille O'Neal, one of the most charismatic guys in the world of sports. He besides, was so quiet. Uh, I was like, what's size, going though? on? What, what impressed you most about him? Did he have any natural skill or, or not um, at all? Um, uh, yeah. <laughs> God, that's, a, that's a no. We're so glad you're watching ESPN on YouTube. For more sports and analysis, download the ESPN app. And for live streaming sports and premium content, make sure you subscribe to ESPN+. Plus. We'll see you there.